COVID-19 pandemic propelled the sequencing and diagnostics market as the healthcare industry deployed capital at unprecedented rates to fight the virus. Diagnostic capabilities are more powerful than ever, but an estimated 350 million individuals worldwide still have an undiagnosed disease. Advancements have been made over the last few decades, but not until recently has the promise of genomics fully come into fruition. In 1990, the Human Genome Project began with a goal of mapping the entirety of the human genome. In 2003, the project was concluded with 92% of the human genome sequenced as the industry simply lacked the technology to decipher the remaining 8%. Only in 2022 were scientists able to decipher that remaining 8% through the advent of more comprehensive sequencing technology. Long-read sequencing played a key role in making this a reality. The human genome is too long to be sequenced as one continuous string. To sequence, DNA is broken into fragments, sequenced and pieced together into a continuous sequence. Given the breadth and complexity of the human genome, reassembling can be difficult, leading to gaps in sequencing data. Long-read sequencers, like those offered by Pacific Bioscience and Oxford Nanopore, are able to analyze much longer fragments of DNA, leading to a more comprehensive approach to variant detection. This opens a door to a host of different diagnostic and therapeutic modalities, helping drive research in the healthcare industry and improve patient outcomes. Industry has made great strides in making genomic profiling known around the world, though such tests are still not widely available. The sequencing industry is bifurcated into two end markets, research and clinical applications. The research setting is comprised by biopharmaceutical firms, academic institutions, and government organizations to help drive drug discovery and monitor pathogens such as SARS-CoV-2. Adoption of sequencing technology has historically been strong in the research setting, as institutions have validated the importance of such technology. Understandably, accuracy has been the main criteria for acceptance, driving continued improvements of sequencing analyzers. The clinical market is a bit different. It looks to offer genomic analysis at a patient level, at hospitals, laboratories, and physician offices. These tests can help diagnose diseases such as cancer, determine hereditary predispositions, and shed light into reproductive health. As expected, price plays a key role in the widespread adoption of genomic technology in the clinical setting, and the high prices we've historically seen have limited adoption thus far. The industry has made great strides in this regard, where the price per genome stood at nearly $100 million in 2002, it now stands at around $600. The industry now works to bring that down even further, specifically to $100 per genome. We believe this price will help drive widespread adoption and unlock the genomic sequencing promise, making it a reality to patients across the world. Importantly, we expect scale to play a key role for sequencing to reach its full potential, helping derive actionable insights from the study of tens of millions of individuals' genomic profiles. Having spoken to short read and long read technology, we believe increased conversion between the two will help drive adoption, while also helping decipher biology's most difficult questions. Beyond the study of DNA, however, there's a whole host of other biological components that can also shed light on links to illnesses. RNA, for example, is a messenger that carries DNA's information to create proteins. Proteins, for their part, do most of the work in cells. They are required for the structure, function, and regulation of the body's tissues and organs. A narrow analysis of a patient's DNA simply isn't enough to get a complete view of biology. Multiomic analysis is now becoming the standard, offering a more comprehensive view as to how illnesses affect the body and how to best treat them. Genomics, transcriptomics, the study of RNA, and proteomics, the study of proteins, each offer a piece of the puzzle contributing key information about biological and disease mechanisms. Beyond that, we're also seeing efforts in epigenomics. For example, this is a study of behavioral and environmental impacts on how genes work. As multiomic analyses become more common, we are seeing industry firms collaborate to help drive efficiencies, integrate and analyze data, and decrease costs. Insights gathered through genomic sequencing have broad-reaching potential. 
In oncology, for example, genomic sequencing is already improving how physicians detect, treat, and monitor cancer. Understandably, survival rates for cancer patients fall precipitously the more advanced the cancer is. In only 25% of cancer cases, patients get diagnosed via screening methods. The rest are diagnosed when the patient is symptomatic and most likely in later stages. This makes treatment and management of the illness that much more difficult. On lung cancer, for example, 57% of cases are diagnosed at stage three. In pancreatic cancer, 53% of cases are diagnosed at stage four. Through multiomic analysis, new modalities offer a new, improved diagnostic option, helping facilitate earlier detection of cancer and improving patient outcomes. Liquid biopsies are non-invasive, blood-based tests that offer fast and accurate early-stage detection of cancer via a simple blood test. Via multiomic analysis, these tests look for biomarkers in the patient's blood. These are biological molecules that serve as signs to specific illnesses. Measuring biomarkers like tumor shedding and tumor DNA in the blood, for example, can help determine if a patient has cancer and localize a cancer signal, helping guide next steps. This new approach has potential to improve the entire cancer care continuum. Liquid biopsy tests can be utilized as a routine screening performed at yearly checkups and as a diagnostic aid for suspected cancer patients. It can also help predict a patient's response to a specific drug, measure cancer levels during treatment, and monitor remission patients for any signs of recurrence.